Good evening. Good evening once again. Just give me a moment. I haven't arranged my pen and tablet. Okay. So welcome to the homework portal. And uh, yesterday I had given you a set of problems, five solution, five problems on uh, mechanics and MCQs. So today let us see the solutions for it. I think I need to upload my PPT. Right. Okay. Now let us begin. If you want to get to know about all the problems that we have solved, you can refer to this uh, particular link. You will get the, the video link. You can download it. You can view it in YouTube. You can do whatever you want. Right. Okay. Fine. So now let us begin. So towards it. Yeah. Okay. The first question. It stated that an object initially at rest is accelerated by a constant force. Constant force. The moment I get this term, the first thing I should write is F equal to constant, which implies A equal to constant. Okay. Which graph shows a variation of time t of the kinetic energy and the variation of time t of the speed of the object? When I say kinetic energy, how does kinetic energy and acceleration are related? When acceleration equal to constant, that means velocity is proportional to time, right? If velocity is proportional to time, V versus T should definitely give a straight line, right? Speed versus time should be a straight line passing through the origin because if I put T equal to zero, V should be zero. Thus, definitely this is incorrect. This is also incorrect. Now you have two options here. Kinetic energy, which is exponentially increasing. Kinetic energy, which is linearly increasing. If velocity is increasing linearly, can the kinetic energy increase linearly? No. Why? Reason is because kinetic energy is given by half mv square. Okay. If I say x versus t, x versus t, x versus t is linear, then x square versus t would be exponential. Right. So therefore, definitely. Okay. So this is incorrect, and this only has to be correct. Over here. So this a is the right option. Okay. So go by reducing the incorrect answers. That's the easiest way to solve this. Right. Let us look at the second one. Two stationary objects of mass 1 and 2 kgs are connected by a thread and suspended from a spring. From a spring, right? The thread is cut. Now you cut the thread here. What are the magnitudes of the accelerations of the objects in terms of the acceleration due to gravity g? Now, initially, when you have the spring, you have a 1 kg object, 2 kg object. Now you observe the total, that is the entire system is in equilibrium here. It's neither moving downwards nor moving upwards. The moment you cut the string, let us look at this object. Now what will happen to this object? Very simple here, object just falls down. With what acceleration will it fall down? Whether it's a 2 kg object, 10 kg object, 50 kg object, whatever it is, this will always fall down with an acceleration equal to g. So therefore, acceleration of the 2 kg object should be g. Definitely, this is incorrect. Remove these two. Now, we are left out only with these two. Now, let us look at, okay, what is the right answer? Now, when you leave this one, now what happens to this object? The object is already here. Will now immediately spring back to action like this. Right? Will immediately spring back to action like this. Now, when the 2 kg object was here, what is the total force acting at the spring? The weight of this 2 kg object plus weight of the 1 kg object. Totally, if I write this here, Totally, the weight, the tension acting on the string over here, that is the pulling force over here, should have been equal to 3G. Okay. What is then this will be in equilibrium? See, see, 3G is acting downwards. 3G is acting downwards. Okay. 3G should be acting upwards. So the 1 kg object is in equilibrium. 1 kg object is in equilibrium. This is a free body right hand. Okay. Now what we'll do is, if I cut this 2 kg, now what, what happens over here? This 2 kg, 2G is absent. 2G becomes because it's already been cut. So the downward force is no more 3G, but this will only be equal to G. Do you agree? Right? So this is only equal to G. So therefore, the net force that is acting over here should now be equal to 3G minus G, which is equal to 2G. Right? So it should be equal to 2G. So thus, you see that. So the net force is equal to 2G. And uh, now let me write this as M into A is equal to 2G. And where is this acting? This is a net force over here which is acting on 1 kg. 
So 1 into A is equal to 2G or A should be equal to 2G. Right? A should be equal to 2G. So therefore, D is the right option. Okay? So most of them, they consider 3G is the right option. So therefore, see to it that this is the right option over here. Right? But this step is very crucial. This step is very crucial to understand because what I say is, instead of 1 kg object here, if suppose it was a 4 kg object, then what you have to do is, you need to substitute this by 4 over here and the total uh, downward force will also be varying over there. Okay, fine. Let us continue with the next one. An object of mass 2 kg is thrown vertically downwards. Thrown vertically downwards. It's not dropped. Thrown vertically downwards with an initial kinetic energy of 100 joules. Initial kinetic energy. What is the distance fallen by the object? You are throwing it downwards. Initial kinetic energy equal to 100 joules. Now it falls downwards. It falls downwards like this. Followed by the object at an instant when the kinetic energy is doubled. It is not the ground. Ground is somewhere over here. Final here should be doubled. 200 joules. Now he is asking you, what is the height fallen by the object? This is what is been question. Now how do you solve this? Now, now suppose this is a nothing but a free fall problem. If the velocity is V here, velocity is U here. Now if I ask you, how do you solve it? You definitely have an answer. How v square is equal to u square plus 2gh is what I know. Now what I do is, I will multiply this by m, v, m by 2 on both the sides. Is equal to m by 2 into u square plus m by 2 into, gh, into 2gh. When I do this, when I do this, now what is half m v square? The final kinetic energy, it is already given to you, 200. What is it? Half mu square initial kinetic energy, which you threw it 100 joules plus now this two and this two goes away. You have mgh. What is mgh? M is nothing but 2 kg, g is 10, and h I do not know through which distance it will follow, right? In essence, what I have done is I have just multiplied this by 2. In other words, I can say I have applied my conservation of kinetic energy, conservation of total energy, mechanical energy, right? And thus I will get this as. 100, 200 minus 100. Let me elaborate this step. I'll pull this one in the side. Pull it like this. 200 minus 100 is equal to 20H. 100 is equal to 20H. H should be equal to 100 divided by 20, which should be equal to 5 meters. Thus, the answer is B. Okay. Very, very easy question. Only thing is you have to write it appropriately. Okay. Now, let me move on to the next one. A student of weight 600 Newton, Newton, what is this force? Climbs a vertical ladder, vertical ladder, distance, time, T. What is the power developed by the student against the gravity? Power. What is power given by? Force into distance divided by time. Substitute all the values. Force is 600. Then displacement as distance is 6 divided by 8. In fact, you can always ask the question, let's see this force 600 Newton, what is this force? Is he applying? No. This is a force exerted by the gravity. Since I write this as power is equal to work done divided by time taken, and this work done should be equal to F dot S, right? If it is F dot S, this should now be equal to F S cos theta divided by time taken, right? Now, if I want to write this in this manner also, I can do it. So, I'll not, I'll, what I will write is, I'll, this is, write this as cos theta here. Now, what is theta? Theta is the angle between F and S. What is F? Gravitational force, right? Weight is a gravitational force, which is acting like this. And what is this displacement? Displacement is like this. So, what is the angle between them? Angle between them is 180 degree. Thus, I should get this as 600 into 6 by 8 into cos of 180, right? So, thus, when I do this, cos of 180 becomes negative, okay? So, this becomes 3600 divided by 8 minus that. Then, now what do I do? I need to simplify this. 8 ones are 8, uh, four, I'll do 4 twos are 4 nines are 9 is 900 by 2, which is minus 450 watt. Here I'm getting negative, but here it's positive. Look at the question once again. What is the power developed by the student against gravity? When I say against gravity, I'll make this positive. 
Okay. If you say just what is work done by the student, that means 450 watts is the work done by the student. That means so much amount of energy per unit time he has spent it. Okay. Why does he spend? Because gravity is pulling it. Okay. When I say against gravity, this negative time is already been taken care of. That's the reason why we have only positive values and thus the answer is 450 watts. Okay. Now let us move on to the next one. Very easy question. What is the unit of electrical energy in fundamental units? So SI units, we have already done this in one of your tests. Okay. So let us look at this also. Electrical energy. Just check the concept of energy. What is energy? Work done. What is work done? Force multiplied by displacement. What is force unit? Newton. Unit of displacement? Meter. Is there a Newton meter? No. Because he has asked about SI units. So you cannot write this. So this should be. What is Newton? Kg meter per second square. Why kg meter per second square? Because this is mass, this is acceleration, right? And this is meter once again. So this should be kg meter square per second square. So therefore, this is kg meter square per second square. Okay. So most of them had written this as your answer, which is incorrect. Okay. So because the moment you say electrical energy, you always think that either there should be a coulomb or an ampere, which is incorrect. So every energy, whether it is mean, Electrical energy, thermal energy, nuclear energy. The moment you say it's energy, which means it should have this as your SI unit. Okay. Thank you. I think, yeah, that's the end of this. So let us, yeah, we already seen the solutions. This was a misnomer. Okay. We remove this. So thank you for being with me a long time, attending the numericals. See you once again in the next class. Thank you.